This screencast is about repeated measurements. In this document, you'll learn how to determine uncertainties in repeated measurements and how to determine the optimal number of measurements to take. Here's an example of a distribution of a bunch of measurements. X bar is the term used for the average or the mean. Sigma is the standard deviation, which is the width of the distribution. So about two-thirds of the measurements should fall within this range of x bar plus or minus sigma. About 95 percent of the measurements should fall within x bar plus or minus two sigma. Mu is the Greek letter that represents the population mean. If we could take as many measurements as possible, that's the average that we'd get it will be somewhat different than our sample average of x bar. As you take more and more measurements, then these two will get closer, because as you take more and more measurements, x bar will be a sample from more and more of the mean. The standard deviation of the mean is the distance around our measured average, x bar, in which we expect population average, mu. So, again, about two-thirds of the time, we would expect mu to be within x bar plus or minus alpha. And about 95% of the time, we'd expect mu to be within x bar plus or minus 2 alpha. So the standard deviation is the spread of points from the average. The standard deviation of the mean is the spread of the sample average from the population average. So, here we have an example of a small sample. With a small sample, then the fit won't look very much like the normal distribution, and the mean, the average, will be approximate. With a whole bunch of measurements, then the shape should be more like the normal distribution, and the average should be much closer to mu. So, for example, say you did a test in a class of about 200 students, and your mark was about 74 percent, and you would like to figure out the class average. You can do this, you can estimate it by asking more and more people for their marks. So for instance, in this following, in the following diagrams, what you'll see is the bins made that are five marks wide. So we collect all the marks between, say, 50 to 55, 55 to 60, and so on. So the horizontal axis shows the center mark of each bin, the vertical axis shows how many marks fell in each bin. And the approximate values of the average, the standard deviation, and the mean are highlighted. So for instance, say this is the first 10 marks. Yours was about 74%, so say this first one is your mark, and then these are marks for nine other people. So if you rearrange these marks, we can rearrange them in order to make a histogram. So now we see them from the lowest to the highest, so your mark is somewhere in here. Now we've added a column for the bins, so you notice that there's one mark from this bunch that fits in the bin from 60 to 65. There are four marks that fit in the bin from 65 to 70. There are three marks that fit in the bin from 70 to 75. And there are two marks that fit in the bin from 75 to 80. So when we draw this on a diagram, here we see the 1 between 60 and 65. The 4 between 65 and 70, and so on. You'll notice the numbers on the bottom here are the averages. So if this bin is from 60 to 65, the midpoint of that bin is 62.5. So with 10 measurements, we get an average of about 71, with a standard deviation of about 5. So that means 95% of the class marks should be 71 plus or minus 10. And 90, there's a 95% chance that the class average, which is mu, is between plus and minus 2 alpha of 71. Now, if we take 20 measurements instead of 10, the standard deviation is actually about the same. In fact, it's actually gone up a bit, but the standard deviation of the mean is smaller. When we take 40, again, the standard deviation has stayed about the same, but the standard deviation of the mean has gotten smaller again.
AD measurements. It continues. Finally, with 150 measurements out of 200, the standard deviation is still around 5, but the standard deviation of the mean is around 0.4. So 95% of the marks are still between 59 and 80, but the class average, we can be pretty sure, is between about 69 and 70. So we have equations for the average, which should be familiar, the standard deviation. You notice this form of the standard deviation makes it easier to calculate as you're adding measurements, and you'll see this later. And the standard deviation of the mean is calculated from the standard deviation by taking the standard deviation and dividing it by the square root of the number of measurements. So, as you noticed, hopefully on those graphs, the mean and standard deviation will change less and less as you take more measurements, but the standard deviation of the mean will always get smaller. Again, because it's the standard deviation divided by the square root of number of measurements, then the standard deviation will always be bigger than the standard deviation of the mean. This one will, sig alpha will always be smaller than sigma, because alpha equals sigma divided by the square root of some number greater than one. So here we show how you calculate it. So here we have our first measurement. It has a value of 1.1. So if we add a column in the table for the square of that value, then we add that. So when we add a second measurement, we do this. So we square each of the measurements as we do them. Bottom, we add up the, the x measurements. We add up the squares of the x values. And n is the number of points. So in this case, it'll be 4. So the standard deviation is given by this. So now we can fill in these values. So we get the standard deviation for this data is about 0.13. Standard deviation of the mean is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So it's 0.064. One of the things we haven't talked about is the precision measure of the data values. If we're not given the precision measure of the data values, how can we estimate it? Well, in this case, you notice all of these values are given to one decimal place. And so since the distance between each of these is 0.1, none of these are farther than 0.1 from any other one, or closer than 0.1 from any other one, we can assume the precision measure is 0.1, since that's the smallest gap between these values. So the uncertainty in the average of a set of measurements is based on two things the uncertainties in the individual measurements, and the scatter of the data values. Whichever one of these is bigger should, be de should determine what the uncertainty is in the average. So the uncertainty in the individual measurements is usually the precision measure. If we don't know the precision measure, then we can use the smallest space between two values given, as shown in the previous example. The scatter of the data values is given by the standard deviation of the mean, because the standard deviation of the mean represents a range around the calculated average where you expect to find the ideal average. So the uncertainty in the average is the bigger of these two quantities, the precision measure and the standard deviation of the mean. So again, as I said before, if we're not given the precision measure of the x values, we can assume it is 0.1, since it's the smallest gap between them. So from our previous example, where we have a standard deviation of the mean of 0 0.06, the uncertainty in the average is the bigger of the precision measure, 0.1 in this case, and alpha, which is 0 0.064 in this case, so the uncertainty in the average is 0.1, because 0.1 is bigger than 0.064. So the uncertainty, so the average is 1.25 plus or minus 0.1, which rounds to 1.2 plus or minus 0.1.
So taking measurements, more and more values, gets less and less effective as time goes on. There's a limit to how many measurements you should take, and you've taken the optimum number of measurements when the precision measure and the standard deviation of the mean are equal. Since alpha equals sigma over the square root of n, then if alpha equals the precision measure, then the value of n that solves that equation will be the optimal number of measurements. So the precision measure equals alpha for the optimal number of measurements. So that gives us that the optimal number of measurements is the standard deviation divided by the precision measure all squared. So for our previous example, where the precision measure was 0.1 and alpha was 0.064, we already have enough measurements. However, if the precision measure had been 0.01, then we could take more measurements. In that case, when we plug in the values and do the calculation, we get an optimal number of measurements of about 169, which means that we could take an additional 164 measurements because we originally took five. Improving experiment means reducing the uncertainty in the result. So if the precision measure is bigger than the standard deviation of the mean, we can improve the experiment by getting a more precise instrument. If the standard deviation of the mean is bigger than the precision measure, we can improve the experiment by taking more measurements. When we have the optimal number of measurements, those two are equal, which means that we would have to do both of those things in order to improve. In other words, to improve the experiment, we would have to get a more precise instrument and take more measurements. So to summarize, the average is better than a single data value. The uncertainty in the average is the bigger of the standard deviation of the mean and the precision measure. And if you don't know the precision measure, you can use the smallest distance between the data values. The optimal number of measurements have been taken when the standard deviation of the mean equals the precision measure. And how to improve the experiment depends on which quantity is bigger, the standard deviation of the mean or the precision measure.